G'day from Baku after the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Were you watching the race coverage? Did you see Esteban Ocon having to dodge people in pit lane? Well, there's a bit to explain. I was 15 metres from the incident, and I'll tell you more in just a moment. Let's have a look at what the media is reporting and media that weren't there in pit lane. So what actually happened with this Esteban Ocon incident? Well, let me tell you what I know. And bear in mind, I didn't find out about it until about 20 minutes after the race. So behind me is the area where we normally queue up to get access to pit lane. There could be as many as 50 to 60 photographers there. But when I rolled up, and I was, uh, I've got to tell you, I had a pit wall tabard, which is this orange one here. Now this allows me access before everybody else. So I moved inside the gates. Now the gates at the moment have none of that red mesh on it, but typically it does. And I stood inside and the other photographers waited outside. I'm waiting for a signal from an official to go across what I think is a live track. So I stood there, I think, for maybe four or five minutes. And then eventually we got the signal to go. Well, who gives that signal to go? Well, it was an official situated over here near the gate. And I actually confirmed with him, are we okay to go? And he said yes. At that point, I moved swiftly, I don't run, but I moved swiftly to get a spot where I want to take a head-on shot of our winner, Sergio Perez. This is the shot. You can see a couple of camera bags on the ground. You can see that my colleague to my left has a camera over his shoulder. But the people out in danger in pit lane aren't photographers. Esteban's crossed the line where you have to slow to 80 k's an hour, but still, you don't want to get hit by a car at any speed, and those people certainly had to move quickly to get out of the way. As David Croft said on the telecast, it was a shambles. The funny thing is, though, I didn't even notice that a car had come past. Probably because there's track action going on, and that's obviously louder because the cars are going faster than a car in pit lane. Another thing to remember too is that Esteban has gone through a little chicane, so he sighted these people very late. And Park Ferme at this track is at the very start of the pit lane, not the end, which it is for most races. Now, is it unusual for us to be able to cross pit lane while the race is still going? No, it's not unusual, it happens often. But this was a very late pit stop, obviously unexpected, and while it didn't catch us photographers out because we were all in place and following the rules and regulations, I guess those scrutineers can be very thankful that uh, racing car drivers have very quick reaction times. Well, let's move on now to other happenings over the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Yuki Tsunoda under attack here from his press officer, Yana. This was all a bit of playful fun that I captured. And what's it about? Well, something to do with sunglasses, and I can tell you, Yuki has a stash of them. Yana needed a pair so he dipped into his backpack there and offered her a pair and I think somebody else wanted one as well I don't know why I think he had eight pairs in there here's something new Ferrari has solar panels on their pit wall no other team's ever done this before as far as I can tell and whilst it doesn't run the whole pit wall it would certainly assist and what about the podium presentation look at this picture what's wrong with it have a good look you diehards might know uh, Charles and Max are on the wrong platforms. They should be reversed. What about Lewis's fashion? Four quite amazing outfits. And this was the look inside the bridge from the Marriott over to the track. And it was a beautiful setting to take photos of someone like Lewis dressed up in fashionable kit. Oh, and did you see the QR code on the back of the Alpine car? This is what it looked like and uh, very hard to capture at high speed, obviously. But uh, if you've been lucky enough to scan it, you might win a prize. Friday night, the drivers head off to a driver's briefing and they come back when it's quite dark and they walk back with the Hilton Hotel in the background. It's a beautifully lit building at night and uh, I quite love taking these photos of the drivers because they're relaxed, there's no one else around and you get this beautiful backdrop. But I must say, I thought the paddock was very quiet. In fact, it was eerily quiet for most of the time. Only on Saturday and Sunday after the sessions did it get really busy. Now. That will be the polar opposite of Miami coming this week and a real buzz, but very difficult to get photos of drivers because there's so many people angling for a selfie. Poor Oscar Piastri, huh? A stomach bug that rendered him uh, quite ill for most of the weekend. I didn't pick up on that until I took this picture of uh, the young fella leaving the track on Friday night, not looking too happy, but I'm delighted to say he was on the mend and should be fine by the time Miami comes around. Every week I do an Instagram post called Watches of the Paddock and Nick DeVries told me a little bit about this watch. This is one of the 11 different moon swatches put out by Swatch and Omega. Why did he choose the light blue one? 
He was born on February 6, that makes him an Aquarius. And if you know anything about astrology, you'll know that each zodiac sign has a ruling planet. And Aquarius's ruling planet is Uranus. And this is the Uranus version. Did you notice that the pit lane opened 10 minutes earlier prior to the race? I did because I missed getting onto the grid in time. But what I did notice was that a lot of the drivers were left with these extra minutes of nothing to do. I found both Pierre Gasly and Lando Norris just sitting on the chairs that the uh, crew normally sit on to watch a race, just killing time and waiting for the national anthem. And I believe this is going to be the norm for all of the races this year. Coming up shortly, I'm going to be doing a video on what aftershaves the drivers wear, or scents or fragrance, however you want to term it. This weekend, I got the answers from 13 of the drivers and hopefully over the next couple of races, I'll get all of them to tell me which fragrances they wear. I think you'll find it'll be a very interesting video. Drivers, girlfriends, Yes, just one, Valtteri Bottas had Tiffany Cromwell with him. And parents, yes, we had Oscar Piastri's dad, Nico Hulkenberg's dad, Alex Albon's mum, and Mick Schumacher's mum. Interesting guests, yes, we had this DJ who was uh, rather snazzily dressed. This lady here with some stunning makeup on and a really good attitude. And this is the Noll Doll with 3.4 million followers on Instagram. She certainly turned a few heads. Also turning heads this weekend was Lando Norris with the beginnings of a beard and a moustache. I think Daniel Ricciardo told him that uh, he wouldn't win a race until he had a beard. So he's taken that advice on board. Let's go back to qualification. And after I happened to see Max Verstappen walk with purpose over to George Russell, you know, photographing the event and I'm thinking, they're not getting on too well here. And about 20 minutes later, I found out that yes, indeed, Max was none too happy that George squeezed him going into turn two during the sprint race. For those photographers watching, you might be interested to know that I had a play with a tilt shift lens from the top of one of the buildings. This was the results here. And for those non-photographers, uh, it just simply makes the edges look blurry. There's a bit more to it. And I also had a play with some multi-exposures. Here's four shots on the same frame. On the Friday afternoon session, I went up to the far part of the track and photographed from the ground level as the cars go up past the uh, beautiful old city. And there was a cat on the track. Thankfully, it wasn't while the cars were running, but I photographed this cat on Wednesday. And I thought at that time, I wonder how they would stop a cat getting on a track in a pretty much a city area. Well, as it turns out, they can't. There was a touch of local culture in the paddock too this weekend with the organiser handing out these hats. I don't know what they're called, but uh, they're colourful and very local. Next up, it's off to Miami. I'll be doing a travel video about my journey. You can see that right here on my YouTube channel. And for my best images live from the track and all during the week, go to Instagram and search at Kim Illman. Thanks for watching and stay passionate. Is this the first? Help! <laughs> Jesus!